I think this is it. Okay, so just really kick off this episode. We had a mission, or we had an email from Mod. We're looking for a guy named Curtis Weaver, and said that he's basically like uh, lives out in the middle of nowhere. I think this is what they were talking about. Kind of looks like it. Looks like the little trailer there. Three. Yeah, this is ex this is it exactly. Let me go ahead and pause it and kind of show you where we're at on the map. Okay, so we're kind of at the top of it. You kind of have Beaker's Garage over here, and you go down the road a little ways, kind of like to where this little road is at right here. Hopefully that kind of gives you guys a little bit of a general idea. But before I go ahead and jump into that, let's go ahead, come down, I need to grab a car. This going to kind of block this guy off. Said that he might be, this guy seems harmless, but he, you know, is a little crazy or something. Oh, there's a cop right there. Dignity Village. That's what you're gonna, you guys are going to be looking for. I'm just gonna go ahead over here, head off the road, and come back to it. Okay, so now that was easy enough. Lost the cops, I mean we didn't have to go far, and the cops don't spot as a stolen vehicle if you come back around like they do in online. So let's go ahead over here now, and pick up this Curtis Weaver. Curtis, I finally figured out where you were at. Where... There's people over here. I'm, I'm gonna be nice. We have a bunch of shit, but I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna use a stun gun. Shit. I missed. Give it up and I might let you live. Oh, I forgot it says, I forgot that has to be, uh, red. Okay, so these guys really don't care about him. Move. Go chase him down. I am not. This is discrimination. If you guys didn't know that, kind of get up the hill a little faster. You can jump. You're coming with me one way or another. <laughs> all right, all right, stop. Yes, I'll I know you will. Oh, that's better. Now let's go before I change my mind on the whole dead or alive. And don't run. That was easy. And since I got the time and the equipment to show you guys where they're all at, I might as well, right? Because I think this... You gonna play nice now, Granddad? I'd rather die fighting than surrender to the hypocritical laws of your oppressive regime. Uh, although you did, in fact, surrender. I took a stance, didn't I? Stared the bully in the face, then backed down at the last minute. That's how activism works. Not that I'd expect a mindless drone of the nanny state like you to understand. Whatever. You know, I never realized hobos were so well armed. <clears throat> I'm not a hobo. I've made a conscious decision to reject the capitalist society. By living in a hobo camp. It's a lifestyle choice, you government stooge. And have you looked in the mirror recently? Okay, so, now that that's out of the way. Like I was saying... I think this does play into part of the Strangers and Freaks. Um, I might have done that in another episode or not. I don't remember. But I know Maud was a Stranger and Freak this mission, so. Me. I only just got out of jail for that 
sit-in protest outside the exchange in Liberty City. Such a sense of the power of group action. Until we all turn on each other. Hmm. What are they trying to send you down for now? I didn't pay much attention to your file. Of course you didn't. I assaulted a cop at an anti-globalization rally. Beat him up with a fire extinguisher. And I'd do it again. Screw the police. Nothing but mindless stoolies of the totalitarian regime. You're preaching to the choir, Pops. What? You're worse than they are. A paid thug of a corrupt legal system rounding up agitators for the ruling autocracy? A puppet on a power trip. I just wonder who's got their hand up your ass. Whoa! Hold on there, socialist Santa. If you want an anarchy off, I will take you down any day. I wreak indiscriminate mayhem on an hourly basis. And secondly, no one has a hand up my ass. Would you like <laughs> to look? Listen, nobody's more anti-establishment than me, old man. I hate authority, so watch your tone. Oh, I'm sorry. Hired mensch of the dictatorship, did daddy not love you? No. Daddy left me at a shopping mall and never came back, so I burnt it to the ground. I've lost count of the number of people I've killed in just the last week, and I am very happy to add your name to the pile right now. So why don't you shut your f mouth? Okay. We'll leave it there. <laughs> why are we stopped? Is this the part where you execute? No, I was trying to get in you guys' silly ass conversation. Well, if it isn't my deal, but like I was saying, I think this might add to the Strangers and Freaks because we had to go to Mod as a Stranger and Freak mission to kind of start it, so I'm not sure. But we'll find out. I never had. The son I never wanted and the shrink I could never afford. Do? Kinda. The pursuit of criminal men for profit is back. So crushing work. Well, I can only imagine. I'm retiring, Trevor. I want a peaceful life away from all this insanity and degradation. I want a picket fence and a husband and a dog named Skip. I want the dream, Trevor, and I won't let anyone stand in my way. Good for you, Maud. I wish you well on that quest. I'll find it, Trevor. I'll so is this the last bounty hunter? I'm a passionate woman. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye, Mark. Be well. I think this is the last bounty hunting mission. Is that only like three or four of them? Curtis Weaver. I think we're done. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. It's going to be the end of this episode. If you have any other tutorials that you would like to see, like I, like I just found a uh, spaceship part. I'm going to try and edit all those in together whenever I find them. And some other things like that. Okay, I was in the middle of something here. But yeah, if there's anything else you guys would like to see me help you with, like if you don't know where something's at or whatever, um, let me know as far as campaign-wise. And I'll go ahead and catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. I'm out.